Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, before I start, I cannot see you. The light is very bright in my eyes, but I want to give you a round of applause. Thank you very much for hanging out with me here. So thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Appreciate that a lot. My name is Christoph. I'll, I'm the founder and the uh, CEO of a company called What If Foods. We believe we are a pioneering company that really takes regeneration at its heart. It's deeply embedded in the business model. We start with understanding the soil, trying to bring crops such as the Pampara groundnut, as Scott has pointed out, try to bring the Pampara groundnut on uh, degraded arable land and bring fresh new income to communities where it matters. We then take the produce all the way through an ingredients process, making flour as well as uh, flour for our instant noodles, as well as uh, an ingredient that goes into our milk, and bring that and make it available to folks around the world. We started with our, our journey just at the outbreak of the pandemic in Singapore. We were essentially just making a few products in our factory, and sold them online and delivered them to the doorsteps of everyone who was locked, locked at home. In the meantime, end of this year, uh, you can find us essentially in several markets in Southeast Asia, as well as Asia Pacific, um, and in the United States. So by now we are in about, what, about approximately about 2,000 supermarket stores all over the world but not yet in Europe. The reason has to do with the European food safety regulatory uh, challenges that we have to overcome because the Bambara groundnut is considered to be a novel food, though despite its being thousands of years old. So what we have gone in this journey in the last 18 months or so is that some big names have really started to recognize us, in particular in the United States, and quite proud to say that we have just last week announced a close partnership with an institution that's called Support and Feed that really resonates deeply with us, what we also do. Support and Feed is an organization uh, that got founded by Maggie. Uh, Maggie is a um, uh, mom of Billie Eilish, and of course there are big names that really enjoy our foods in the meantime. So I gave you a snapshot as to what the company is and what the products are. But what I really want to talk to you about is the journey that we are on. And Scott pointed a little bit about the work that we do with the farming communities. And we celebrated the first 200 farmers raising their hands saying, hey, we trust you guys, you, come, you will come back and buy the beans from us. This year we are going to partner with about 7,000 farmers that will be bringing their produce back to us and we will be buying from them. We are operating about 54 communities that implies that we work with 54 chiefs, some district chiefs, some chiefs are inspired to actually speak to their king, hopefully very soon, about the program that we do. Probably it's important to understand that every farmer has, an, has a family of about 10 behind him. So if you speak and if you work with one farmer, you essentially impact about 10 other lives. And I'm proud to say that the work that my colleagues do really impacts in the meantime probably about 100,000 folks in northern parts of Ghana, which is quite significant. We brought a forgotten crop alive, what they call it the Bambara groundnut. Not only was it forgotten, but it was also almost eaten to extinction because in desperate needs of food for hungry stomachs for ch in children, folks have actually fallen to eat their own seeds. So we brought them the seeds that are needed in order to actually start the process of growing the Bambara groundnut with us. And it was a, a magnificent journey that saw some of the farmers eating the beans, but others bringing them back to us if we were just late planting. In the meantime, they are busy planting and telling us, mind you, this year you will not have enough cash in for our community because we will grow so much Bambara for you. So those are the sort of feedback that we get that is just really joyful. 
We also started to really work with BioJar, small scale though, but it's a magnificent addition to the pro pro project that we do. This picture and uh, the drone that flies over this field is probably the world's first regenerative organic uh, test farm. We call it the Rock Farms. Here we are trying out all sorts of different combinations of biochar and beans, spacing, uh, as well as um, other means like um, stimulants and whatnot. And I'm proud to say that this work was established after last year's Planeteers, where we got to start to work with uh, the University uh, Católica in Porto, and all of this work has been done in partnership with this university. So thank you very much to Prof. Marta. I hope she can hear me. Um, and uh, we look forward to many more years to come of the work. So you know roughly about what we do. I want to take you on the journey, as I promised before. I want to take you on the journey as to what we inspire to achieve. And I want to show you and demonstrate to you what sort of levers are possible if one approaches agri-food the way of what food does. So we are inspired not only to go to net zero, but we are inspired to go beyond that. We are inspired to actually take all our legacy carbon out of the atmosphere. So from the incorporation of the organization and the launch of every product, all the carbon footprint that has been, all the carbon emissions that we have caused will be taken out of the atmosphere and will be sequestered through the means of biochar uh, over the due course of the next decade. So how are we going to do that? We actually want to be far below net zero. So how are we going to do that? We came up with a totally different and a new system. A new system that takes agri-food and takes it on its head, puts it on its head. In the center here is the Bambara groundnut. It's a legume. It helps fix nitrogen organically. And therefore, once enough nitrogen is being fixed into the soil, cereal crops that follow after the Bambara groundnut don't need to be fertilized with synthetic fertilizer because the Bambara ground that has put enough nitrogen down into the soil, as it used to be 150 years ago. That's the starting point for rejuvenating and restoring the production capacity of what today is degraded soil. Soil that hasn't got any water retention capacity anymore because it is so sandy and deprived of organic matter. In other words, if it rains, the rain just runs off. And even if it rains, plants don't have enough time to absorb. So what biochar does in that context is it provides a sponge, a storage for this water and other nutrients uh, in the soil. The Bambara groundnut can be split into two parts, into two cycles. One is the beans that we take forward into our consumer goods. And the shells in which the beans grow can be taken forward into biochar. Now, biochar at large scale, produced at large scale, is an exothermic process. That means you have excess energy available. And one can look at making this energy and diverting it into the conversion of the beans into the food. And therefore, all of a sudden, you look at a possibility to create a factory that is only uh, running net zero, essentially. The factory that doesn't need any electricity from a grid. So therefore, we explored what we call a regenerative intersection between tasty foods that are nutritious and very healthy, soil restoration, renewable energy, as well as carbon sequestration, so re carbon removal practices, as well as community well-being, particularly the farming community well-being. So we conducted last year a study, a technical feasibility study, because such a factory is a big monster, it needs to be engineered properly. If you don't rely on utility grids at all, you need to make sure that the engineering is working so that the factory can actually run independently of everything. Quite proud to say that we have conducted this and the engineers gave us a big thumbs up and say, hey, this is possible, this is feasible, let's go after it. I want to conclude my little presentation by highlighting the sort of levers that can be unleashed. The context is that about one third of all greenhouse gas emissions on an annual basis are being emitted by agri-food. But if, we, if some of the players, and if we continue to march our, our way towards that ultimate dream of ours that we call Project Daring Greatly, 
than 3 million people having a glass of our abundant milk on a day-to-day -day basis can help us restore soil health of about 50,000 hectares. We will be able to save the use of about 250 million liters of water. We will avoid the emission of about 1.2 million metric tons of greenhouse gases. And in addition, we will be removing 100,000 tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, convert it into biochar, and lock it away for about a thousand years to come. And on top of that, we will have the opportunity to invite about 20,000, 25,000 farmers to leave poverty behind and join a regenerative economy. So I'm going to uh, conclude my little presentation about what it foods here. And of course, if you have any questions, more than welcome to answer those. Thank you very much. Thank you.